Hey everyone! So today I wanted to go over some ways for you to pay your way through grad school. Now a majority of master's students and a small number of PhD students actually pay their own way through school. But wouldn't it be better if you can get someone else to pay for your education? And by someone else, I don't mean your parents. So watch this video and by the end, you'll be able to make it rain. Just kidding, if you want real money, get a job. Now the first and probably one of the more common ways that you can pay your way through school is to be a research associate or research assistant, you work in a lab, basically. Now, remember when you were an undergrad and you asked your professor, hey, can I volunteer in your lab for free? It's kind of like that, except you get paid. Now, I'll be honest with you, becoming an RA, usually they give the priority to PhD students because they feel like PhD students will be staying longer. So if you're a master's student, it might be maybe a little more challenging to get an RA ship, but I still know plenty of people who did masters who also did an RA ship and used that to pay for several semesters or quarters of their education. So it's certainly something that you should apply for no matter whether you get a master's or a PhD. So how do you go about finding these RA ships? Well, some professors, they probably do some sort of posting and you'll be able to find them either on the department website uh, or they might be on flyers somewhere in the department. Another way is to find a professor during their office hours and ask them whether or not they have any positions available for you. Or if you happen to take a class with a professor who's working on something that you're interested in and you do very well, at the end of the class or maybe during the class, you can talk to the professor and ask them whether or not they have any openings for students like you to work in their lab and maybe help you pay your way through school. Now, whether or not the professor can offer a paid RA ship for you can also depend on the funding situation and it can vary. Some professors have a lot of funding and the funding can be allocated to paying for students. Other times they may be limited. In some cases, if you're patient and there's a professor you really wanna work for anyway, you can offer to volunteer in their lab just to get your foot in the door. And maybe after a semester or a quarter of proving yourself and showing that, oh, I'm interested in this and I do good work, maybe they can upgrade it to a paid RA ship instead of just you volunteering. So having an RA ship job is one common way that grad students use to pay for their education. A second way, and also a very common way, for you to pay for your school is to do a TA ship. And to be a TA, they take master's students, PhD students, even bachelor's students. So regardless of what degree you're shooting for, TA ships, you can apply for them. And not only do TA ships pay for your school, it also gives you an opportunity to teach students if that's your thing, or at least try your hand at it to see if you actually like it. Now, how do we actually find these TA ships? It can vary from school to school. When I was at Berkeley, they actually emailed a list of classes that were looking for TAs each semester. And then I would just apply for the classes that I was interested in teaching. Another way for you to find a TA ship is to take a class and do very, very well in it. And at the end of the class, you can ask the professor, well, I did really well in the class. Do you think I can come on as a TA? And depending on how well you did in the class, whether it be your grades or a good final project, the professor may be inclined to hire you to TA for a future semester or a quarter. But that would actually require you to take the class before you become a TA. But as a grad student, you can often teach a class that you've never taken because they understand that you probably didn't go to college the same place as you did your grad school. And so if you took a class at your own college that's sort of equivalent in terms of the topics in relation to the class that you're trying to TA at your new school, then they'll probably, they'll probably be inclined to hire you if you did very well. Some PhD programs even require you to TA for at least a quarter or a semester anyway. Probably during that period that you're TAing, uh, they'll pay for your school. But keep in mind that being a TA is actually a pretty big time commitment. So if you are a PhD and you're doing your own research and research is the priority, you probably have to spend more time being wise in time management so that you can do both. A third way that you can pay for grad school is a fellowship or a scholarship. Now having a fellowship is probably more common for PhD students because they have many, many years, whereas a lot of master's students end up having to pay for their own school. But there are a lot of scholarships that are available for master's students. You probably just have to Google them and, and find it. But I'll start off by talking about some well-known PhD fellowships that are very common because that's what I'm familiar with. There are lots of different organizations, whether it be companies or nonprofit organizations that can offer these fellowships for interested PhD students that are paying for their many years of schooling. Some of the really famous well-known nonprofit fellowships, uh, whether it be government funded, uh, might include a National Science Foundation, the NSF. There's also a NSDAG, uh, which stands for, uh, I'm gonna look it up, hold on. The National Defense Science and Engineering Graduate Fellowship. So that's also another prestigious fellowship. There's also the Hertz Fellowship, 
which I believe is the same as you know the car company, but um, they offer a very selective uh, fellowship to a very small number of students. But that's one of the harder ones to get. Now these three were among some of the the more famous fellowships that me and like my friends were applying for. I actually only applied for the NSF fellowship, uh, whereas my friends they've applied for a sub a subset of these three. And these fellowships usually require you to submit some sort of an application. I think you have to write a recommendation, show your grades, write essays, explain your research, explaining uh, what you're trying, what kind of research you're trying to do, and why your research is impactful to the world. And I'll make another video talking about writing a fellowship application. But yes, you can apply for those. Now, it turns out that there's a lot of large companies out there that also provide fellowships for students. For instance, Meta, Apple, Google, some of these big companies, they provide fellowships to help fund some of the PhD students out there who apply for their program. And in some cases, I imagine these companies will want to provide mentorship to these students so that these students might join their company in the future. Now, in addition to these fellowships that you can actually apply for, a lot of schools, like when you apply to a PhD program for a particular school, you know, Stanford, Princeton, UCLA, whatever, a lot of these schools also provide their own department fellowships for incoming students. For instance, in my particular case, when I joined Stanford, they gave me a three-year fellowship. And a bunch of other schools, they might give one, two, three-year fellowships for some of the incoming students until these students are able to either find uh, an RA ship or a TA ship or some other source of funding to pay for the rest of the years of their PhD. And so if you did very well in college, there's a good chance that some of these schools will probably provide you some sort of a financial package when you're coming into their program. Last on the list, ways to pay your way through grad school. Now, this last one is actually very important for master's students and some PhD students, is if you've already graduated with a bachelor's and are currently working at a company, there's a good chance that this company might be willing to pay for you to go back to school and get a master's degree. And the reason that companies are willing to do this is obvious. If you choose to go back to school, you're acquiring new skills for yourself, so it's beneficial for you. But at the same time, if you return back to the company after you get the degree, you'll be able to apply the new skills that you've learned to a product or whatever it is the company is working on. So they basically get a more productive worker. So it's actually mutually beneficial for the two of you, the company and the, the student. I actually know some people who've been able to do this where the company was willing to let them do the master's part-time, or they were able to take leave for a little while, one or two years, do the master's and then come back and work for the company. I hear that some countries like the Singapore government actually sends their students overseas and pays for their PhD or whatever if the student comes back to work for their government. And so, you know, I kind of digress, but you know, that's basically what the company's doing too. In terms of this happening for PhD students, I think it's a little more rare because a PhD does take many, many years, whereas a master's is much shorter. But mm, it's possible that it's also an option for them. So there you have it, nice short video, ways for you to pay your way through grad school. It's likely that you probably have some debt left over from your bachelor's degree. So if there is a way to help you pay your way through grad school, all the better for you. I hope this was helpful. Good luck with everything and uh, have a nice day.